In this video, I want to show you some very interesting and unique footage. These are probably some of the rarest shots throughout this strange war. The American Bradley will face off against the Russian T-90M breakthrough head-to-head. -head. The battle will occur at a very short distance, and once more, very strange behavior. What was a single tank doing in this position? That always remains a question. So let's watch. The T-90M is located at this point. That's Bradley, he's getting close to the tank. And now, it comes to a stop. Apparently, this is the location where Bradley notices the tank. Then it starts to move forward slowly, while attacking at the same time. The T-90M also notices him and fires a shot. And the most unbelievable part is, he doesn't get hit. Most likely, the fire control system had already been damaged. After all, Bradley had the right to the first shot. Bradley continues moving at first gear, and virtually every single round fired from its automatic cannon makes direct contact with the tank. The T-90M tank fires a second shot, unleashing its formidable firepower with precision and devastating impact. Based on explosion in front, he hit the ground. Perhaps some shell fragments do manage to reach the Bradley after all, but more on that later. The American BMP is increasing the distance. The T-90M also starts moving backward. Many said that they fixed his reverse and made it faster, but apparently that's not the case. He is still moving backwards at four kilometers per hour. Bradley continues to advance aggressively, and most of the shots hit the tank. And here the T-90M fires its third shot, and once again fails to make contact with the intended target missing by a significant margin. Three out of three into the milk. That's really weird. If the commander's panoramic sight was damaged, there are several redundant aiming systems available. How could he miss three times right in the comments? The tank continues to reverse, while the BMP keeps moving further away. Nevertheless, they both continue to observe each other. At this location, it can be seen that another battle is taking place there's likely an additional Bradley there, firing at the positions. However, the distance is too great to definitively ascertain what is occurring at that location. Bradley veers off the road and takes up a position, and opens fire again. Hits on the tank are visible. The operation of artillery commences with its origin shrouded in mystery and yet to be definitively determined. Bradley makes a quick turn, facing the opposite direction, and heads back to the road he was previously on. And here comes the second Bradley. He's driving beside the tank. At this time, the battle stops and a short lull occurs. The first Bradley starts to retreat, the second one approaches it. And at this moment, something strange happens. Make sure to keep a vigilant eye on the tank's current position there is an incredibly massive explosion happening at this time. Tanks' ammo seem to detonate, but that's not the case. Detonation occurs differently. Some sources online claim it was a thermobaric projectile impacting the tank, while others state it was a small ammunition depot exploding in close proximity to the tank. As always, the author's assumption. The tank may have wanted to deploy smoke grenades, but due to damage, they did not function properly. Usually a smoke grenade flies higher, but burns about the same. But you, my dear viewer, know everything. Write what it was. At this time, the first Bradley is leaving, and the second one is getting ready to enter the battle. He rapidly begins to approach the tank's position. The T-90M ought to be able to see it clearly, but for some unknown reason, it is not firing. This indicates that he has clear issues, he is damaged. Logically, it would be effective to launch the second attack together. But for some reason, the first Bradley leaves its position. Presumably, the tank did manage to hit him, and after sustaining damage, he drove away. There is also a second option. He fired all his ammunition, being empty, didn't want to take risks, and left. However, the attack persists with only one Bradley. He maintains his proximity by continuously closing the distance, relentlessly pursuing his target. 
Second Bradley assumes firing position. And the unbelievable happens. He drives straight towards the tank and opens fire. Continuing to discharge his weapon, he skillfully executes evasive manoeuvres to avoid incoming fire. But Tank doesn't respond to fire. One might assume it's hit and taken out of action. However, then he begins to move. Almost every Bradley shell hits the target. Even if the gun is not working, the tank can still return to its positions. Based on the available information, it appears that he is also executing gliding maneuvers in addition to his other activities. He operates the vehicle in a direction opposite to the one typically used for forward motion. He is trying to escape the line of fire. Bradley's rounds keep coming down. Gotta give credit where credit's due. That tank sure is tough. After so many hits, he keeps moving. Probably the Leopard or Merkava wouldn't move anymore. Bradley is still maneuvering. The attack has temporarily ceased and Bradley is currently in the process of reloading his weapon. The crews of the two vehicles display exceptional courage. After all, the Bradley crew understands that at any moment they could take a shot to the front and likely circling near the tank are drone spotters who can direct artillery fire towards the Bradley. After five mins, artillery goes quiet in the battle. And then he started attacking again. And here comes another explosion. It might seem like that was already an ammunition detonation, but in reality, no. Once more, author's version is firing smoke bombs. If someone comprehended what it truly was, kindly write about it in the comments section. Western experts write that the explosive reactive armor has detonated, but I don't think the explosive reactive armor will cause such a strong explosion. So let's keep our eyes on it. And even after that, the tank continues its relentless movement. Just unbelievable. After dozens of hits, the tank keeps moving. Here's a strange moment. He could have avoided being shot, but for some reason, he moved forward and exposed himself again. Bradley began practicing on the tank again. The temperature is quite low and it feels chilly outside, making it a bit uncomfortable. Nearly every round successfully hits the target. The T-90M is hiding, but it's only driving along one line for some reason. Bradley apparently discharged another round of ammunition and proceeded to go for reloading his weapon in order to continue the engagement with the enemy forces. Just a reminder, the Bradley is equipped with a 25mm automatic cannon M242 Bushmaster. The rate of fire is 200 rounds per minute and the effective firing range is 2000 meters. According to experts, this gun is considered one of the best in the world. Similar cannons are mounted on various military vehicles, not just on the Bradley IFV. They are also quite often used in the fleet. Many ships of the US Navy are equipped with similar guns. The initial widespread combat utilization this firearm received was during the Persian Gulf War. Many tanks of the Iraqi army were taken out by this gun. And here comes the drone spotter, bringing the picture closer. Finally, 
we can see up close what happened to the T-90M. He keeps moving, but at the same time, his turret spins uncontrollably. There is a fire on the front of the turret. It becomes evident that the tank is completely inoperable. It seemed like he headed towards his positions. But eventually veers off the road and crashes into a tree. He received numerous hits and yet continued to move without stopping. The engine ran smoothly. This proves that the T-90M is stronger than its predecessors, like the T-72 and T-80, which clearly would not have survived such a scenario. An unmanned aerial vehicle, UAV, approached the tank and made contact with its left side, leading to a slight backward movement of the tank in response to the impact. The turret is no longer rotating. Clearly the mechanism of the turret is already malfunctioning and it is more likely that the drone has damaged this mechanism. After that, it becomes clear that all tank crew members survived. All three of them leave the tank. Then the drone spotter approaches the tank and captures these shots. I think now no one has any doubts that this is indeed the T-90M breakthrough. Then another drone approaches and takes these photos, and this photograph gives us the opportunity to take a closer look at the tank, to see what happened to it. Most of the relict explosive reactive armor panels are intact. There were different versions regarding the two mysterious explosions, and one of them that worked was the dynamic protection. But this photograph proves that this version is incorrect. But here in this spot, we see that one panel is missing. Most likely it was triggered when hit by a Bradley projectile. And perhaps it was she who protected the tank's track, allowing it to remain operational. We see that a lot of Bradley's projectiles were hitting the right side. This video shows that the author's initial version may have been correct. This is precisely the shooting of smoke grenades. They are right here, on the sides of the turret. So we've clearly understood that it was indeed the T-90M, and also that its crew survived. What stopped Bradley from destroying the crew? Probably he regretted not approaching them. Thanks to the Bradley crew for their non-bloodthirstiness. The primary question is, why didn't the tank retaliate at the end? And missed three times at point-blank range. And all of this is once again the drawbacks of the design. Very weak protection of the fire control systems. But first, I want to tell you about one very important downside. Everyone probably knows about him. That's a reverse gear issue. The tank is moving backwards at just four kilometers per hour. And it seems like no one is planning to address this issue. Firstly, during an evasive maneuver, the tank must sharply move backward and then forward. As this is clear, it will greatly complicate targeting the tank. But for some reason, the T-90M is almost unable to reverse. In the Soviet tank school, reverse movement was of great importance as it was a crucial element of tank tactics and played a vital role in the overall strategy. Tanks excavate a specialized trench with two points of egress. He discharged his weapon and promptly retreated, then reappeared from an alternative location. These shots will provide a clear example of this issue. Two T-90M tanks went on the attack. One fires at the positions. The drone spotter guides both tanks. After that, the artillery started firing at the tanks, targeting them with precision and unleashing a barrage of devastating firepower. The tank crew understands that they have no chance and there is no possibility to retreat backwards. They turn the tanks around and drive back. Simultaneously, the turret is facing the enemy. And then a javelin missile hits one of them. He hits right into the engine compartment. A fiery fountain rapidly emerges from the engine without any delay. Engine stalled, tank completely immobilized, none of the systems working, not even moving turret. After that, the machine is destined for failure. If he had a reliable reverse gear, 
he would not have revealed the stern. Now let's get back to the most important question. Why didn't the tank return fire? And why did its turret begin spinning uncontrollably? The thing is, Bradley immediately hit crucial fire control elements. Most likely, the first shot was aimed at the commander's panoramic sight, and perhaps into some redundant systems, which is why the tank missed point-blank three times. But why did its turret start rotating after this? Pay attention. Right here is where it's on fire. Bradley targets the area around the mask. It's here where the tank defense systems are crucially located for maximum effectiveness. Here they are clearly visible. This is an anti-tank weapon detection system, specifically systems that use laser emissions, such as anti-tank guided missiles. If tank is targeted by laser, system automatically detects source and rotates turret in that direction. Smoke grenades are also automatically released to create a protective screen against laser rangefinders. This is highly effective against missiles that specifically target infrared emissions. But many modern missiles already bypass this system and continue flying towards the tank unhindered. In this case, there's an IR jammer generator. He creates jamming for the missile flying towards him. And it was these crucial systems that Bradley hit. He wasn't planning to break through it. His goal was to disable these systems, and he was hitting them quite successfully. This is indicated by the fire specifically in those areas. The laser warning system and infrared jammers malfunctioned, clearly visible now that they weren't operational. Turret not facing the direction fire is coming from. Evidently, the complete combat control system was toggling on and off, and ultimately, a critical error transpired in the end. The system kept functioning, but didn't know which direction the fire was coming from, and just started rotating the turret. And you have knowledge of what transpired in the immediate sequence of events. This is the version that belongs to the author themselves. You may have different perspectives and alternative versions. We would greatly appreciate reading your unique interpretations in the comments section below. I'll say it again, the video is unique. On paper, any machine is good, but only until it enters real combat. The T-90M is an extremely good tank. Its firepower is top-notch, but there are some questions regarding its defense systems. And that is all. Thank you for watching. See you all next time.